Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl at Bernardston Auto Wrecking in Bernardston, Massachusetts. And this is a Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. Now we've featured one of these before, but that was a coupe. This one is a cabriolet or convertible. Now here's the thing, Carmen Ghia arrived in 1956 and was built through 1974 with minimal changes, but the cabriolet or convertible arrived in 50 a couple of years into the run and was also built through 1974. But here's the thing, in total, Volkswagen built roughly 445,000 Carmen Ghias, of which only 81,000, a fraction, were convertibles like this one. Pretty rare stuff. Now, when this car was new, the base price was $2,609, which was $210 more than a coupe or $360 more than a Volkswagen Beetle convertible upon which it's kind of based. Now, we looked at the front of this thing, we can see it's definitely very different from Volkswagen Beetle, but underneath this Ghia body, or Carmen Ghia body, more on that in a second, is basically a Volkswagen Beetle right down to the same wheelbase, which is 94 and a half inches. The same floor pan with some small changes for body mounting, but basically the same Volkswagen Beetle underpinnings are under this sexy body. Uh, the beauty of these things, again, is they kind of look like they're front engine cars, little vent right here to admit some air into the cockpit, but we all know better. The engine's in the back and it's air cooled. No radiators on these things. And the front engine compartment is not an engine compartment at all. It's basically with a gas tank lives right here. And the spare tire would live uh, up in the nose here. But anyway, this is a uh, originally a blue car. And always we can see the beautiful medium blue paint applied way back when. And these things were built by Carmen, which is and was a, uh, a coach builder in Osnabrück, Germany, West Germany. Uh, Beetles were built at Wolfsburg, but the Carmen Gears were built in a slower pace, a little more craftsmanship at Carmen, again in Osnabrück, West Germany. But again, the front of this thing is very rem reminiscent of a certain Chrysler show car called the Delegance, and a certain Virgil Exner, a Chrysler stylist, is the guy who actually design these things, despite the fact that Carmen uh, and Gear will, will, Gear will take the credit for that. We've talked about that before, but if you want to know more about that, go to the Volkswagen Carmen Gear Coupe video here on this channel to learn all about how Virgil Exner, Chrysler stylist, actually penned the lines that became uh, Carmen Gear. But getting back to this one, cool little book here on air-cooled Volkswagen history, John Gunnell, the master, he's a heck of a writer, I believe still alive, been around for a long time, an authority on vehicles of all types. But here's the uh, an ad for the Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. And then you can see here it's sitting on the infield, the coupe and the roadster or convertible with the little fake vents in the front. Uh, and a couple of British sports cars blurring by. You can see an MGB perhaps right there, the competition zipping by. And it says here, Volkswagen, an Italian designed sports car with a bug in it. Get it? Ha ha ha, Volkswagen Beetle. A Volkswagen Carmen Ghia that is the Italian designed sports car with a bug in it. Designed by the Ghia Studios of Turin. Not so fast. We all know very much that uh, Virgil Exner had a home in de suburban Detroit and in his cellar had a small studio. Yeah, that's where this thing was actually penned, but that's okay. Uh, it says here the Carmen Ghia is built like a sports car with the hand welded, hand filled, and hand sanded seams, all done by the Carmen Coachworks of Osnabrück, West Germany. Down here, another nice thing about the Carmen Ghia is that you can cruise at its top speed indefinitely and though you may never enter it in the Grand Prix, you'd never know to look at it. Uh, okay, top speed, 82 miles an hour, zero to 60 in 21 seconds. So yeah, you're not gonna win any uh, stoplight Grand Prix, let alone the actual Grand Prix in one of these things. But getting back to the hand sanded, hand leaded body done by the craftsman at Carmen in Osnabrück, Germany, we can see right here, these many stamped forms right here could never be done in one shot. So there's a lot of lead filler in these that actually make it look like it's a one piece thing. But all this kind of stuff here would not have been able to be done uh, in mass production on the Wolfsburg line. Now this one is a New England car and this is not something that was done by the craftsman at, at Carmen. This is good old fashioned Massachusetts Bondo right here. That's accident damage. We can see where this thing definitely got deformed and smacked and somebody got into some Bondo and worked their little handiwork here and brought it back to an original look. Probably happened back in the 70s, maybe the 80s. 
But as we make our way around, see a few things. The Carmen Ghee, of course, shared its bones with the Volkswagen Beetle. And in 1968, Carmen Ghee has all got front disc brakes and these vented wheels. Kind of looks like a Chevy Rally wheel, but these vents here are very, very functional. They let air exit from the disc brakes up front. And of course, in 68, that's also when the bolt pattern went from that big five lug thing with the drums to the smaller pattern here with four lugs. In fact, these are bolts, not nuts. Notice how these screw in. They're not studs and nuts. Kind of interesting. But again, this, uh, this style of wheel would be adopted on the Volkswagen Type 2 bus in 1970 when it too went to front disc brakes. But again, Carmen Ghia's disc brakes up front from 68 onwards, which is cool. Before that, drums. Uh, 68 also brought the front fender external mounted gas filler. Let's take a peek, we'll dig around. And this little hole right here, this opens up and inside of here, let's see. The gas filler, <laughs> there we go. Here's the, the cap, not so much, but there's a little a rubber thing that used to flap down and cover the fender, kind of a nice little touch right there, but here's the filler. Before 68, you had to open the hood on these things to access the gas tank to fill the gas uh, like you would have on a Beetle as well. Uh, inside here again, we have the convertible body style. We see it right here. And the beauty of these, Again, is the fact that the top goes down, it's open air motoring, as long as you don't mind zero to 60 in 21 seconds. But again, here's the, uh, was a four speed manual. There's also a semi-automatic available. I uh, love the Ghia logo right here in the dash. Carmen Ghia, the Ghia of course being the Italian design house. The original Volkswagen Sapphire AM radio, this thing right here. And Sapphire was Volkswagen's in-house uh, brand for their radio equipment. And uh, a lot of the switch gear straight out of the Beetle. These soft things here, which were theoretically safety items that would not cut you if you smashed into them at speed. Also Volkswagen stuff, the column, Volkswagen Beetle stuff. Even the heater controls. This, this is the uh, handbrake right here. These are the heater controls. The red one allows heat to come in and is basically a flapper door back here. And around the engine is a housing which traps some of the hot air caused by combustion and then brings it through a duct to this, open this up and it blows into the car. And I've, I've said, heard it said it's like a baby breathing on you. That's about the extent of the warm air coming into the car, but it's better than nothing, kind of. Back seat, yeah, believe it or not, these do have little jump seats. And we can see right under here, the remains of the back seat. Believe it or not, this is kind of a four-seater, although there's a hacksaw that is supplied, and I won't tell you what that's for, but it's definitely needed if you're gonna sit in the back of one of these things. But you know, with the top down, it's such a fun experience, it might be worth it to use that hacksaw to ride in the back once. Go around to the back of this thing. Once again, we'll see the, uh, the vented wheels. Of course, drums in the back, as on a Beetle. And there's the four bolt pattern, new for 68, these wheels in the back. But again, drums in the rear. 1970 is what this car is. And 70 was the year that larger taillights were embraced uh, as lighting laws and safety laws became more stringent and no more overrider bumpers. But again, this one here, the unit body on this one uh, needs a little bit of uh, reinforcement. Something's not happy. But again, with all Volkswagens, the engine is the back. And we open this up here. And there it is. Now, 1970, which is what this car is, a big year because the engine went from 1,500 to 1,600 cc's and 53 to 65 horsepower. So again, this is the most powerful, most potent Carmen gear of them all, 1970 onward. And again, zero to 60 in uh, 21 seconds and 86 miles per hour top speed. And again, uh, not a very fast car, but certainly uh, a lot of fun. The interesting thing though, is the Carmen Ghia's body is very much different from the Beetle. And this is Road Test Magazine right here, November 1969, with all the 1970 imports on the cover. The import invasion was just getting started. The 1970s, of course, was the decade when import cars really took a big bite out of Detroit. It was just getting started here. But before we get into that, Volkswagen Beetle, we can see right there, much different shape, but the chassis, again, the same 94 and a half inch wheelbase, same engine, but one major difference, the air cleaner on the Beetle lives on top of the engine because there's plenty of room for it. There it is right there. Well, on the Carmen Ghia, there's no room. So there's a rubber duct that feeds over to the side and the air cleaner goes down here. So again, Carmen Ghia specific stuff right here on a Beetle up top. Again, the Beetle body goes way up high like that. So interesting stuff how they had to sort of fudge and manipulate to make the Ghia, Carmen Ghia and Beetle 
uh, used many of the same parts, but not all of them, of course. Uh, this one here, pretty well beyond any kind of hope. But again, in total, 445,000 Carmen gears were built between 50, uh, 56 and 74, and of them, only 81,000 were open top cars like this one. So uh, pretty special collectible vehicles. The rust on this one is probably just too far. You know, there's no way this thing's ever going to be economically restored. But as they say, if Bill Gates or somebody who had a, a means to do it wanted to, you can restore anything, as they say. And the beauty here is that this whole engine assembly right here is adaptable to a Volkswagen, 270 pounds, and that includes the transaxle. So you can lift these or drop these things out in about an hour if you're good. Uh, so the drivetrain in this one is still probably very savable. And again, being an air-cooled engine, this thing did not freeze and crack. There's no coolant to expand and crack. So that's one of the beauties of Volkswagen engines. More often than not, they can live outside in a junkyard for 10, 20, 30 years, whatever, and still be salvageable. Whereas most V8s and, and liquid-cooled engines do tend to freeze, expand, crack, and become instant junk, should that happen. So Volkswagen engines have a better than even shot of being rebuildable. So that's the story of the 1970 Volkswagen Carmen Gear Cabriolet convertible, very rare body style. And again, uh, 360 bucks more than a Volkswagen Beetle convertible. You have to decide for yourself if that sexy body is worth the $360 surcharge. I think I'd take it myself. Now, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mag's YouTube channel and uh, give us a like, share this video with your friends, and hit the bell so you're alerted when the next video happens, which is tomorrow morning.